friends uh, now let us discuss uh, your uh, amendments in uh, your registration chapter a few amendments are there in your uh, registration chapter one is uh, all about your uh, cancellation section 29 and one is with respect to your uh, suspension also so section 29 uh, and your rule 21 that's an amendment so you're talking about amendment in your section 29 subsection 2 and rule 21 basically you're talking about so moto cancellation by department now in so moto cancellation by department previously out of the listed uh, 10 cases in total there was one point that if you're not filing your returns your registration uh, would be cancelled so previously the point was for composition taxable person for your composition taxable person if you're not filing your return section 10 if you're not filing your return for three consecutive tax periods basically composition tax of person were not filing uh, their returns uh, quarterly they were paying quarterly in cmp 08 and their return was uh, yearly cst 4 but there was some confusion they where they said that you're talking about the uh, filing of your return for three consecutive tax period which was uh, creating a confusion because there this uh, three consecutive tax period is was to be understood as cmp 08 form which is for payment not for return filing now they have removed this uh, ambiguity and they have said that for composition taxable person when department can start so moto registration when they don't file the return when they are not filing the return after the end of the financial year beyond three months from the due date so that's the due date of filing uh, your uh, <coughs> gstr4 which is 30th of april of next financial year so after the due date you are not filing your return for the next three months then you are a non-filer your registration may be cancelled for others for others other person means you're talking about other than composition taxable person for others you're talking about a scenario where you're not filing your return previously the point was you're not filing your return for a continuous period of uh, six months now again there was a problem here because when you're talking about a regular taxable person not always uh, you're uh, filing monthly returns right not always you are required to file monthly returns so there was a doubt those who have gone for qrmp scheme they will not file uh, their monthly returns uh, their returns will be on quarterly basis so that was also causing a problem now what they have done for their composition taxable person for a composition taxable person they have given very clearly that uh, it is three months after the due date of uh, three months after the due date of your GSTR 4 you are not filing your GSTR 4 even after 3 months of the due date and if that is a scenario your registration may be cancelled for other than composition taxable person they have given the time limit in rules for a continuous tax period as may be prescribed for other than composition taxable person previously it was 6 continuous months which does not make any sense because uh, uh not always everyone was filing monthly returns now they have what they have said for a continuous tax period as may be prescribed and what is prescribed in rules which is basically rule 21 now in rule what they have said if at all you are not under qrmp scheme then you have not filed your return for continuous six months so you are talking about mrmp scheme in a case where you are talking about your mrmp scheme in mrmp scheme you are covered under section 39 if at all you are talking about QRMP scheme, you are covered under proviso to section 39 subsection 1. You are talking about your QRMP scheme, quarterly return, monthly payment. So in such QRMP scheme for QRMP scheme, you are not filing your return for continuous period of two tax periods. That is two quarters. Two quarters. Right. To put it in a nutshell, we are talking about uh, your composition, taxable person, and you're talking about your regular tax regular person others others for a composition taxable person before the amendment before the amendment what was the scenario after the amendment what is the scenario? before the amendment one is before amendment one is after your amendment Now, before the amendment for composition taxable person, they were focusing on what? 
the focus was on your three consecutive returns three consecutive tax periods the wording is where you have not filed the return for three consecutive tax period basically understand that the doubt was whether you should see cmp08 which is on quarterly basis or this has to be seen as gstr4 which is on yearly basis so that was the confusion that was the confusion it was actually causing a problem because composition taxable person this is a payment cmp08 is for payment written filing is strictly only gstr4 so that was actually causing a problem should we wait for three long years no now after the amendment they have said that okay nothing doing we'll make it simple if you have not filed your gstr4 after three months within three months after your after your due date due date of gstr4 which is yearly which means gstr4 basically is 30th april of next financial year and thereafter you have to wait for three months after that even after that which means uh, for financial year 21 22 it is 30th april 2022 after that you date wait for three months which means may june july even after july if you are not filing your gstr4 then return would be return would be your uh, registration may be sue motor cancel you are talking about uh, you are talking about sue motor cancellation for non filers for non filers that was the scenario now what you need to understand is for a composition taxable person forget about the complexity or confusion which was that before after the amendment things are very 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 simple your due date of gstr4 has gone even after that uh, three months have gone and you have not yet filed your gstr4 you have not filed your return even after three months of, of your due date of gstr4 now when you're talking about your uh, others other than composition taxable person previously they were focusing on six continuous six continuous months rather they were very very specifically you're talking about six months now the problem was it was for all six continuous one it was for everyone now the problem here was not everyone was filing monthly return again see if you see the amendment they are trying to correct it not everyone was filing monthly return so after the amendment what they have done they have understood that that not everyone files a, a monthly return for those who are filing quarterly for those who are filing quarterly so basically you are talking about quarterly uh, gstr 1 and quarterly gstr 3b so basically you are talking about uh, regular taxable person and uh, casual taxable person going for qrmp scheme now what they have said for those who are filing quarterly for them for them it is it is because quarterly contains uh, two quarters six months would be equal to two quarters so it is two continuous quarters two continue consecutive tax periods that is what they tell two continuous tax periods so when i tell two continuous tax periods it is two continuous quarters two quarters for others you have who file on monthly basis now who all file on monthly basis regular taxable person or casual taxable person who has gone for mrmp scheme not only them you will also find your nrtp non resident taxable person nrtp who files on monthly basis not only that you are talking about your isd registration you are talking about your isd registration where also you are required to file on monthly basis not only that you are talking about oidars from outside india etc etc all of them they are filing on on monthly basis for them it is six consecutive months six months so you are talking about six months if you are not filing a return for six months finished so when you are talking about other than composition taxable person after the amendment life is very 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 simple if you are a, a regular taxable person casual taxable person under qrmp scheme it is two quarters it is 
two quarters. Or if at all you are talking about a regular taxable person, casual taxable person on MRMB scheme or NRDP who always files on monthly basis, ISD who always file on monthly basis, OIDRS from outside India monthly basis, uh, your TDS which is all on monthly basis, etc. etc. All of them. It is, it is six continuous months. Right. So for a composition taxable person, for a composition taxable person. Your due date for GSTR 4 has gone. Even after the due date has gone, three months have passed by, you have not yet filed your GSTR 4. So, three months after your due date, you have not yet filed. So, it is not about uh, number of returns. Only one return, your due date have gone. You have waited for three months, you have not filed your return. So, motor cancellation may initiate by the, may be initiated by the proper officer. Others, QRMP scheme, it is uh, two quarters. And if it is not QRMP scheme, then it is six months. So, that is how you need to understand this entire amendment now there is uh, another amendment which has come out in your suspension of registration again the same provision section 29 but this time read along with your rule 21 a capital a rule 21 capital a now what is uh, they have attached a proviso what is proviso is trying to tell it is talking about revocation of uh, suspension revocation of suspension now what this point is trying to tell let us see the amendment which has come out provided Further that, but the registration has been suspended under sub rule 2A. Rather, when you talk about suspension, there are three categories 21 capital A1, 21 capital A2, 21 capital A2A, 21 capital A2A. So, here you are talking about 21 capital A2A because we have contravened the provisions. Uh, of section 29 2b or section 29 2c now what is this section 29 2b or 2c again section 29 2b and 2c the amendment that you discuss these are the provisions when you're talking about section uh, 29 2b and 2c non-filers so related amendment only so if at all your uh, suspension is by proper officer based on uh, based on the data available on the portal because you are non-filer of return and another condition registration has not yet been cancelled registration is not yet cancelled it is still in process your non-filer of return suspension has started registration is not yet cancelled then what is the what are they trying to tell this, this suspension shall be deemed to be revoked if at all that person has filed all the returns if at all that person has filed all the returns now basically if you see the wordings of, I mean, if you are trying to understand your rule 29, rule 21A rather, rule 21A, as I said, is split into three parts. One is rule 21A capital, I mean, one, one is rule 21A, two, one is rule 21A, uh, three. Now, when you talk about the first category, rule 21, capital A, one, it talks about, uh, Suspension when the by as initiated by the SSC. Suspension which is initiated by the SSC because SSC is going for cancellation, he wants suspension. Rule 21A uh, 2 talks about suspension initiated by proper officer. So you are all talking about your suspension. Rule 21 capital A3 talks about suspension initiated by proper officer because uh, because when he is seeing the data on the GST portal when you see GST portal there is a huge discrepancy in the figures basically when this if you see the initial wordings you will basically find that uh, when they are talking about there is a huge variation or deviation you are only understanding that the deviation is only in your uh, uh, GSTR uh, 1 sales versus GSTR 3B sales or uh, GSTR uh, 2B input tax credit versus uh, GSTR 3B input tax credit. It's not only that. Proper officer is cancelling because of some information coming from GSC portal. That information coming from GSC portal can also be non-filing of returns. That information coming from portal can also be non-filing of returns. One of the case. So it can be uh, GSTR 1 sales is more than GSTR 3B sales or credit GSTR 3B input tax credit is more than 
GSTR to be input tax credit or etc. So such other analysis. You are getting some information from your portal where proper officer is trying to initiate it. Now the amendment has come only in this part. The amendment is telling that based on GSC portal a particular person is not filing the returns for which suspension may have been started. If suspension is started plus cancellation is not done plus all the returns have been filed. All the returns have been filed. There are three conditions. Suspension has started because of Rule 21, Capital A, Sub Rule 2A, which uh, not three basically, it is Sub Rule 2A. There is no three. Rule 21, Capital A, Sub Rule 2A. There is no three. It was added later on. Rule Capital uh, Rule 21, Capital A, Sub Rule 2A, where proper officer is cancelling or suspending the registration, not cancelling, suspending the registration because of some information on GSE portal. More sales in GSTR 1 than in 3B, more input tax credit in GSTR 3B than in 2B or non-filing of returns. If it is because of non-filing of returns and if at all suspension has started but cancellation is not yet done and the SSC finally files all the returns and the SSC finally files all the returns then they are telling that okay in that scenario suspension would be automatically revoked suspension would be there's no need of suspension anymore very fair point because this suspension started because of non-filing of returns now all the returns have been filed so when it started because of non-filing of returns and all the returns have been filed there is no need of any suspension anymore so suspension will be revoked automatically right so you need to understand first that under rule 21 capital a sub rule 2a one of the reason for uh, so moto cancellation Sumoto suspension by proper officer. This is uh, Sumoto suspension by proper officer could be because of uh, things which are given by GSC portal and that thing could be non filing of returns. So, suspension can be initiated by proper officer under Rule 21 capital A 2A, not only based on GSTR 1, 3B, or GSTR uh, uh, 3B 2B, but also because of non filing of returns. And if that, if that happens, and if cancellation is not yet done, if all the returns are filed, it started because of non-filing of returns, now all the returns are filed. So whatever suspension was done earlier, it is revoked automatically. So that is this entire understanding. So that has been explained here. Now let us discuss the amendments uh, which are there in your uh, written filing chapter. Basically what we will do in written filing chapter, first we will... Uh, uh, go through those amendments which are not at all important for your exams but still they are, they are there they are basically correction amendments say for example there's no matching concept so they have removed matching there's no need of section 43 they have removed that uh, the corresponding reference of these in other provisions they have removed that so first we'll go through those provisions uh, where they are not important for exams but are given in your discussion so that you understand them just go through it once rather when you are uh, after watching this video lecture you not even touch those provisions again so when you talk about your uh, provisions like you're talking about uh, matching concept your matching concept which is given in section 42 43 and it is given in two sections and it is given in rule 69 to 79 out of which all the rules are not important except for rule 78 which talks about uh, matching of the details given by electronic commerce operator and the supplier that is that was rare right from the beginning it was happening it is still there so all the other rules uh, right starting from 69 to 79 except 78 are removed so you will find that these provisions these provisions they are omitted they are omitted because understand that matching was never ever happening right from the birth of gst there was no matching ever happening uh, after five years they decided okay if it is not happening let us remove these provisions so 42 43 is removed uh, the corresponding uh, provisions that is rules rule 69 to 79 except for rules uh, 78 which talks about matching of the details given by electronic commerce operator and that of uh, the supplier who is supplying through ego that was there matching was there and it is still there in the provisions as well so this doesn't make any sense not at all there only theoretically it was there not is removed also when you talk about section uh, 43a when you talk about your section 43a <coughs> which was all about uh, restrictions uh, in uh, claiming your input tax credit now 
Section 43A was about restriction and claiming your input tax credit. Now that restriction is there in Section 38 itself. We have discussed this a number of times while discussing other amendments. And Section 43A was never ever notified. Again, it was not in use. It is being removed. And the corresponding reference, say for example in late fees, in late fees, you never file GST at 2. In late fees, uh, which is there in section 47, you never file GST at 2. There is nothing called as GST at 2. There was, you have something called as auto generated GST at 2 A to B, but there is nothing called as GST at 2. So, reference of section 38 in section 47 and uh, the reference of uh, section 38 in section 48 read along with rule 83 where you are talking about uh, inward supplies uh, section 38 you are not filing GST at 2 uh, no one is going to file your inward supplies again the reference of that for GST practitioner was again removed practically GST at 2 was never ever filed by the recipient recipient gets the auto generated GST at 2A to B but he never files something called as GST at 2 so reference of that in section 47 late fees uh, your uh, section 48 GST practitioner of the automatically that is uh, removed you will find that uh, reference even in your section 168 which is talking about circulars given by CBAC you are talking about circulars which are given by CBAC again same analogy when you never file something called as uh, GST at 2 no one was literally filing GST at 2 Reference to that does not make any sense. So if you see these provisions, they were never ever required. They are only theoretical. Ah, one important point that is there is now specifically previously late fees uh, for late filing of uh, TCS return was by uh, CBAC FEQs. Now what have they done is specifically they have introduced late fees even for your TCS return late fees is introduced even for your TCS return now this is important understand that late fees was there for TCS return before the amendment by way of CBIC FAQs CBIC FAQ said that though late fees uh, for TCS uh, return under section 52 is not specifically given in section 47 but it is implied that late fees will be there now it is incorporated in section 47 itself Previously also late fees was there. Now also late fees is there. The difference is previously late fees for your TCS return. Previously your late fees for TCS return was implied. It was not strictly given. It was implied and CBAC FAQs was clarifying that. Though section 47 does not talk about late fees for TCS return. But it is implied that it is equally applicable. Now they tell that okay we don't need CBAC FAQs. We will directly mention that in your section 47 itself that late fees will be there even for your TCS return GSTR 8 and GSTR 9B specifically there. So again it is again a correction amendment. So if you see your previous lectures you will be finding that late fees for section 52 return is there but bracket will find CBAC FAQs. It was not directly given in section 47 it was implied by CBAC FAQs. Now it is directly mentioned in section 47 itself. So now if you see all these provisions wherever I have put cross mark they are the amendments which are there but you will find that they are not of so significance because it was already implied even if you see miscellaneous provisions uh, what is being said is what what are the three portals that you have one is your uh, e invoicing portal which will handle e invoicing matters one is your uh, e webble portal which will handle e webble matters all other functions all other functions will be managed by www.gst.goa.in when i tell all other functions it is not only registration not only uh, payment not only return filing not only computation and settlement of igst but also all other functions all other functions like uh, notices appeals etc etc specifically what they have said is now we want that the main portal www.gst.gov.in not only manages your 
registration or payment or return or computation and settlement of IGSC, but also manages all the other functions. Understand this way. You do have three portals. First portal is e-invoicing portal, which will manage only e-invoicing. Second, e-bill portal, which will manage only e-bill. Third portal is the main portal, which will not only manage your registration, payment, your return filing, computation and settlement of uh, your IGSC, but also all other functions like your notices, orders, appeals, etc., etc. All other things will be managed by the main portal. Again, it is only. It was already very clear in the beginning itself, but what they have done, they have specifically said that out of three portals, e invoice portal will manage only e invoicing, e webble portal will manage only e webble work, the normal portal or the main portal www.gst.gov.in will handle all the other works, right? Starting from your registration, payment, return, computation, settlement of IGST, notices, orders, appeals, etc., 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 etc. Again. It has not brought any change. It is only again a clarification kind of stuff. So if you see all these provisions are put a cross mark. Please make sure that right from the beginning of amendments, I have been putting cross mark for how many such provisions were. That is an amendment, but it is a kind of correction. So you need not specifically focus on them. Okay, that is an amendment. After watching this video, if you remove all these provisions, understand that amendments are life is very 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 simple. You need not even bother to touch these uh, provisions. Now coming back. To the main provisions of uh, written filing even when you see these two provisions uh, they are merely merely correction provisions again not so important first you are talking about your gstr1 section section 37 so basically now you are talking about your gstr1 gstr1 so when you are talking about your gstr1 or invoice furnishing facility it may be GSTR1 or your invoice furnishing facility. Either you are talking about GSTR1 in case of QRMP scheme, it may be invoice furnishing facility. What is given? In If you see the amendment in your section 37 subsection 1 or section 37 subsection 2, it is merely correction kind of amendment. What they have done? They have said that every registered person other than so and so, so and so, because uh, section 37 is only for a regular taxable person and a casual taxable person, shall furnish. They have added the word subject to such conditions and restrictions. A correction. He shall furnish his GSTR1 or IFF subject to certain conditions or restrictions. Right. Now, when a supplier is filing his GSTR1 and IFF, the recipient will get his uh, the, get the details of his inward supplies in gst at 2b which is static gst at 2a which is dynamic so what is given thereafter the supplier will give the details of outward supplies uh, on a particular date and such details shall be subject to such conditions and restrictions within such time and such manner as may be described communicated to the recipient communicated to the recipient there's no fault that is only a correction the language is being corrected. Supplier will file his GSTR1 or IFF within such time. And the moment he files, uh, the recipient will get uh, the details of his invert supplies uh, in GSTR2A, which is dynamic, GSTR2B, which is static. So, okay, the clarification is GSTR1 needs to be filed subject to certain conditions and restrictions. And the opposite party will get his in his GSTR2A to be subject to conditions or restrictions. Right. Previously, there was a point that uh, you cannot file GSTR1 after 11 to 15. Now, that is practically it was never that. So, you need not be, we, if you see the main lectures, we would not have never have discussed these points. So, from 11 to 15, you cannot file rather GSTR1 due date is normally 11th. Though section tells it is 10th, but if you see the notification, it has postponed it to 11th, 11th of the next month. So, all these points are never ever discussed. They were never ever there right from the beginning. I've been telling this they were never ever there right from the beginning and they have been removed likewise uh, uh, what a recipient uh, should do recipient will correct it recipient will get the details and he has to correct it and all is given section 32 it was never ever there matching concept so this concept of gstr2 the concept of gstr2 and the concept of matching was never ever there therefore you find proviso to section 37 subsection 1 being removed and section 37 subsection 2 being removed again as i said 
these are only correction provisions forget about it when you are uh, uh, going through revising your amendments please even don't bother to touch them now let us see the main provision which has been amended rather till now in written filing chapter whatever we have discussed we have discussed a lot of provisions here we need not even touch them because they are mere correction amendments right not having any impact previously situation was the same now also situation is same certain corrections are being done now let us see your section 37 subsection 3 can you revise your returns no you cannot revise your returns can you rectify them yes rectification is uh, possible so when you talk about your rectification of error or omission is possible previously the rectification due date was uh, your September month return of next financial year September month return of next financial year or actual date of uh, annual return of that financial year now they have changed it to 30th of November everywhere beat your input tax credit beat your credit note now the date last date is 30th day of November following the of the next financial year of the next financial year or actual date of uh, filing annual return whichever is earlier you will find the same amendment same kind of provision Ret this is rectification for GSTR 1 this happens to be your rectification of order or omission in GSTR 1 likewise you will find the similar kind of provision you are talking about rectification in your GSTR 3b or rectification not only in GSTR 3b by the way in other returns so you are talking about rectification in GSTR 3B or you are talking about your GSTR 5 or 5A etc etc rectification in other returns rectification in other returns same language previously it was uh, September of the next financial year or actual date of filing of annual return of that financial year now it has been replaced by 30th of November 30th of November or actual date of uh, annual return of that financial year same language now you are talking about even rectification even rectification in your TCS statement TCS return which is your GSTR 8 which is your GSTR 8 right so same language previously it was due date of uh, September month return of next financial year now it is 30th day of November of the next financial year or actual date of filing of annual return of that financial year which of this year so one is given in section 37 one is given in your section 39 and one is given in section 52 <laughs> so to consolidate all these provisions let me take it in this way rectification of error or omission in returns be it your section 37 gstr1 or section 39 whether you talk about your gstr 3b or gstr 5 or 5a or 6 or 7 or your uh, tcs uh, written gstr uh, tcs written gstr 8 rectification rectification wherever rectification is possible that is the last date so rectification of these returns be it gstr 1 or be it gstr 3b or gstr 5 or 5a or 6 or 7 or be it your gstr 8 previously what was the due date previously the last date was was your due date of september return of next financial year or actual date of annual return of that financial year now what have they done is this due date of september return of next financial year they have replaced it by 30th of november of next financial year 30th of November of next financial year they change it to 30th of 
नवंबर ऑफ नेक्स्ट फिनेंशियल ईयर और एक्चुअल डेट ऑफ एडल रिटर्न ऑफ दैट फिनेंशियल ईयर विच एवर इज अल ईयर सो वॉट इज द चेंज ईयर इज यू विल फाइंड दैट ड्यू डेट ऑफ सेप्टेम्बर रिटर्न ऑफ नेक्स्ट फिनेंशियल ईयर इज रिप्लेस बाई थर्टियथ ऑफ नवंबर ऑफ नेक्स्ट फिनेंशियल ईयर द अदर पोर्शन एक्चुअल डेट ऑफ एन्यूअल रिटर्न ऑफ करेंट फिनेंशियल ईयर रिमेन्स दी दैट इज दैट नो चेंज There's no change in actual rate of annual return of that financial year. The last date has changed. Now this amendment is that in three places. Now I'm trying to summarize it. You are talking about last date of taking input tax credit. Rectification of error or omission in returns. raising credit note in all these three places you will find that the timeline which is given us 30th of november of next financial year or actual date of annual return of that particular financial year which ever is earlier which ever is earlier so whether you talk about your uh, section 16 or whether you talk about your section 37 or 39 or 52 or whether you talk about your section 34 in all these three places in all these three places the last date for taking itc is 30th november of next financial year or actual date of annual return of that financial year which ever is earlier last date for correction and return Is the same. Last year for raising credit note is the same. But you need to understand one thing. When you're talking about the last date of uh, taking ITC or rectification error or uh, omission in, uh, in return, actual actual ITC or actual rectification, actual ITC claiming, claiming ITC, claiming ITC or actually doing rectification of error omission should happen in any of the return can happen in april return to october return april return to october return of next financial year but filed before filed before 30th of november of next financial year so what is the point they are trying to tell us in this case you should claim itc or rectification should happen in the return in fact on the portal it should happen on or before 30th of november of next financial year which means it is possible to rectify it only in april return to october return of next financial year you cannot rectify in november return whereas when you talk about raising credit note there is a small difference you can raise a credit note on or before 30th of november of next financial year which you can put in any of the returns you can put in april to november return when i tell i can raise credit note even on 30th of november i can even put on 30th of november return of next financial year of next financial year which i can file even after due date after 30th of november obviously it should be before uh, the actual date of uh, finding your annual return so here what is the point that they are trying to tell you have to raise credit note on or before 30th of uh, november of next financial year you have to raise it not uh, put it in the return you have to raise it you have to raise uh, your credit note on or before 30th of november of next financial year which means it can be put in april to november return of next financial year and that can be filed that return can be filed even after 30th of november see the difference when it is all about claiming itc or correction or rectification of errors i need to do on the portal 
it should happen on the portal it should happen on the portal the work should happen on the portal before 30th of november of next financial year but when i am talking about raising credit note i should raise credit note as per my books on or before 30th of next financial year so here when i am talking about last year for taking itc or rectification of error or omission in the return i can do only in april to october return of next financial year that to that is condition number 1 and that needs to be filed on or before 30th of november of next financial year but when it is all about raising credit note all i need to do is raise a credit note uh, before 30th of november of next financial year in my books and i can include that in my april return even and i can include that in my november return so that's the difference here it is correction is april to october return of next financial year file before 30th of november here it is april to november of next financial year this can be filed even after even after 30th of november but it should be in april to november of next financial year so that is the difference that you need to understand that is the difference that you need to understand in all these cases right now talking about the other amendments this amendment is there in section 37 section 39 and the section 52 which we have taken together now the next provision which is that the amendment which is that is uh, there in your uh, gstr 1 section 37 sub section 4 it talks about a scenario that you cannot file your gstr 1 if the details of outward supplies of the previous tax period has not been filed by you if you want to file gstr 1 of current period you have to file gstr 1 of the previous uh, period you have to file gstr 1 of the previous period obviously government can relax it so later point is if at all uh, government on recommendation of uh, council uh, may allow a registered person to file gstr 1 of the current period even if uh, gstr 1 of the previous period that is a relaxation but the basic provision is if you want to file gstr 1 of current tax period make sure that gstr 1 of the previous tax periods are already filed now this needs to be read along with another provision or another amendment which is that in your section 39 now what is this point trying to tell a person shall not be allowed to file his uh, return for tax period that is he is not allowed to file his gstr 3b of the current tax period if if what it is you are not allowed to file gstr 3b of the current tax period if the return of any previous tax period it means previous gstr 3b or the details of outward supplies of the set tax period has not been furnished by him which means if i want to file gstr 3b of current tax period i should file gstr 3b of previous tax period there is no change also if i want to file gstr 3b of current tax period i should have filed gstr 1 of the current tax period i should have filed gstr 1 of the current tax period so this is the amendment obviously there is a note provided government can relax it so that is not important so previously it was uh, it was like if i want to file gstr 3b of current tax period I have to file GSTR three of previous previous tax period. That that was the understanding. Now, under additional point, if I want to file GSTR three B of current tax period, I should also file GSTR one of the current tax period, right? So these two are the amendments. Actually, there were two restrictions which are there already. Two restrictions have come now. Let us try to understand that. Now, if I am talking about uh, April month, May month, and your June month. I'll make things very simple. So April months you have GSTR one, GSTR three B. May month you have GSTR one, GSTR three B. June month you have your GSTR one, you have GSTR three B. Let me talk about uh, four restrictions totally. Two were already there. Now, what were the two which were already there? Now, first, this point that if I were to file GSTR three B of May month, I should have filed GSTR three B of April. If I want to file GSTR three B of June, I should have filed GSTR three B of May. 
this was already there this was already there now another provision if at all i have not filed gst r 3b of previous month april month i cannot file gst r 3b of may month so this was already there if at all i want to file gst r 1 of may month i should have filed gst r 3b of i should have filed gst r 3b of april if i want to file gst r 1 of june i should have filed gst r 3b of may so these two were already there these two were already there what are the two new restrictions that has come out now the two new restriction is one is if i want to file may month gst r 1 i should have filed april month gst r 1 If I want to file June month GST R one, I should have filed May month GST R one. That is a new provision. Another new provision. Only if I file April month GST R one, I can file April month GST R three B. Only if I file May month GST R one, I can file May month GST R three B. Only if I file June month GST R one, I can file June month uh, GST R three B. So totally, they have made a mess of it. There are totally four restrictions. So first two restrictions were already there. Now there are other two restrictions which have come out. Now you will tell that okay, what are they trying to tell? So if I want to simplify it, this is all the complication stuff. It if I want to simplify it, it can be done in a very simple manner. What are they trying to tell? They are telling that you should go in this particular sequence. First file April, then go to May. First file April, then go to May. Then file May, then go to June. So first, this is the summary. First year to file GST R one of April, then file GST R three B of April. Then go on. Then you have to file GST R one of May, then file GST R three B of May. Then go on. Then file GST R one of June, and then file GST R three B of June. This is a summary. They want if I were to give numbers of the sequence, they want the order in this way: first April month GST R one, then April month GST R three B, then May month GST R one, then May month GST R three B, then your June month GST R one, June month GST R three B. If you read all the four restrictions together, the summary is very simple. Current months one will open current months three B. Current months three B will open next months C S T R one. The next months C S T R one will open next months C S T R three B. Only next months C S T R three B will open the subsequent months C S T R one. So on, so forth. So if you see the final answer, final answer is quite simple. Final answer is quite simple. So starting. With April first file April month GST R one then three B of April month only then May month you can file GST R one first then GST R three B only if you file May month GST R one and three B June month portal will open GST R one first then three B this is the sequence the sequence is given numbered here so that is uh, not only these two are the amendments third and fourth were the amendments but I were if I were to only see the amendments it will not make sense. the entire analysis of the two restrictions which were there earlier and the two restrictions which have come now one in section 31 one in section 39 if i merge all the four restrictions two earlier and two amendments you will get this summary right, so that is all about this uh, particular point now talking about your section 39 section 39 lot of uh, points we have already discussed talking about section 39 section 39 written There's a point in section 39, subsection 5, which talks about NRTP return. The due date of NRTP return has changed. Previously, it was uh, 20th of the next month. Now it is 13th of the next month. 20th of the next month. Now it is 13th of the next month, or seven days after the last date of registration, whichever is earlier. So they have changed the due date of NRTP returns. They have changed the due date of NRTP return. So when I am talking about your NRTP return, NRTP return. What returns non-resident taxable persons files? They file GSTR five. Now before the amendment due date was twentieth of next month. 
or seven days from the last date of registration this was a scenario before the amendment before the amendment now after the amendment what has happened they have replaced it that 20th of next month is replaced by 13th of next month or seven days from the last date of registration again same thing which was earlier they have just changed the due date the due date from 20th it is now changed to 13th so that is amendment in your section 39 subsection 5 now when you talk about your uh, the next amendment which is there in your uh, proviso to section 39 subsection 7 QRMP scheme if you see QRMP scheme there is a correction again this is a correction amendment proviso to section 39 7 is being changed if you see QRMP scheme there are two modes of payment one is self assessment method one is you are talking about self assessment method one is fixed sum method now they have given the legal backup for fix or some method so there is no particular amendment rather i would rather tell that there is nothing new year they have replaced the proviso to section 39 subsection 7 but nothing new year they have only given the backup already even before the amendment for qrmp scheme when you talk about the modes of payment one you had self assessment method right output tax minus input tax credit one you had uh, your uh, fixed sum method percentage percentage if in the previous quarter you are under MRMP scheme, then for the first two months uh, you have to pay uh, your uh, hundred percentage uh, of the tax paid in the last uh, month of the last quarter. Or if the previous quarter we are under QRMP scheme, then for the first two months of the current quarter you have to pay that thirty-five percentage uh, of amount paid in cash ledger in the entire last quarter. So that was the understanding. There's no change. They have just given the legal backup. If you see the note for this particular uh, point, you will find that. In section 39 7 fixed sum method is now validated to section it was already that now they are just putting in the provisions so no change it is only a correction mechanism when at the moment I tell it is only a correction mechanism there's some correction I'll put a cross mark because it is not bringing any new change it was already that now there's a backup that's a small correction in the wordings of the section which was that we see all the other places you will find that all the other amendments now if you see the entire written filing chapter actually amendments in written filing chapter are very less what is there is a lot of uh, nonsense uh, thing is that a lot of correction amendments is that rather than calling it as nonsense the right way is a lot of uh, wrong points were given or uh, uh, points which are given were not at all there practically so a lot of corrections are there whether you talk section 37 or whether you talk about section 39 uh, a part of it or whether you talk uh, 42 43 which was never used 43 which was never used or whether you talk about corrections in 47 uh, 48 or you're talking about 168 or about GST portal you'll find lot of things it is only correction amendments the moment I you see any correction amendments or what I've done is I put a cross mark just to make you understand that it's mere correction don't worry about it focus on the other provisions uh, that we have discussed so that is all about the amendments in your written filing chapter